for the past few years. One lucky winner got to spend one night there, but now they're offering overnight stays on the third floor all year long. It will cost you $495 a night. Why? That's off season. Now, JD, if you want to stay there during the holidays, it'll be around two grand. Oh, okay. Well, that's nuts. That's nothing. Yeah. Well, we're fine with that. Chump change. Uh, can, can I be this guy this morning and point this out? We're just a shade over a halfway to Christmas. It's June now. We're 207 days away to Christmas. <laughs> Let me just throw it out there. I'm not trying to rush things. I'm just letting you know you have just over six months left to get the holiday shopping done. Uh, here's the forecast for today. Nothing Christmas like at all. Lots of sunshine. Temperatures should be in the 70s. A few clouds around this afternoon. The wind less versus what we saw yesterday and we stay dry today. I think we're dry tomorrow as well. We'll talk more about tomorrow and the weekend forecast still ahead. John. Sounds like I still have about 200 days to get my shopping done. <laughs> All right, a ramp closure <laughs> in the Canton area, uh, 30 westbound to 77 southbound. Beginning today, this is going to be closed through June the 30th and doing some bridge work in that area. Elsewhere, things aren't looking too bad. There was an earlier accident on 480 uh, near 77, so maybe beware of some lingering effects. Also, this is in place until 6 a.m. 77 southbound between 90 and 480 until 6 a.m. Let's set outside to get a quick check of those ODOT cameras for you. Four live looks at our highways this morning. Traffic volume pretty light. We'll keep an eye on that throughout the morning. Terrence. 509 right now. A lot of people talking about this here. What Mr. Matt did that cost him his job and has the team apologizing now too. Plus dash cam video of Tiger Woods arrest. What he was unable to do for officers during that traffic stop and Super Screen 5 is up and running. Keeping an eye on your weather and morning commute during the break. We'll be right back. Five thirteen right now. Have you seen this uh, video yet? We now have video of a very disoriented Tiger Woods interacting with police just before they arrested him for DUI in Florida. Woods says he had an unexpected reaction to a mix of prescription pills. He was confused about where he was when police asked. Officers asked him to tie one of his shoes. He ended up untying the other shoe, though. Then the officer gave him the standard follow the light test. You see that here. But as you can see, his head is not following the light at all. Then there was this. Recite the entire English alphabet in a slow, non-rhythmic manner, meaning you're not going to sing it, okay? Do you understand the instructions? Okay, what were the instructions? Not to sing the national anthem backwards. Woods did eventually recite the alphabet correctly, but officers arrested him for suspicion of DUI. However, a breathalyzer test shows there was no alcohol in his system. Well, happening today, President Trump will announce whether he will pull out of the pull the U.S. out of the landmark Paris Climate Accord. The global treaty is aimed at cutting the use of climate changing fossil fuels. White House aides have said no decision is final until Trump announces it. If he withdraws from the accord, it will fulfill a campaign promise, but would anger international allies who spent years of difficult negotiations crafting the agreement, which has the support of nearly 200 nations. There are three new developments this morning in the FBI's Russia investigation. Let's get you caught up. Ousted FBI Director James Comey is expected to publicly testify as soon as next week. He'll tell the Senate Intelligence Committee about his encounters with President Trump and whether the president pressured him to end the Russia probe. Now, the second development, the House Intelligence Committee has officially issued subpoenas for Michael Flynn and President Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. Finally, CNN reports Congress is looking into whether Attorney General Jeff Sessions had another undisclosed meeting with Russian leaders, this time last April, before one of then-candidate Trump's speeches. I want you to come look at this video here, too. They're being called the rubber robbers. You'll understand why in a little bit. Uh, they're two-part heist, as a lot of people talking this morning. The thieves in Vegas broke into this warehouse, not once, twice. They escaped with 30000 condoms. You get the rubber robbers part now, and that's just part of this. They also got away with at least $10,000 worth of sex toys. The owner of the warehouse had this to say. I don't know how many they can sell, but I sure hope they can use some. Police are now trying to track those guys down. 
515 is the time right now here in Cleveland. Uh, today has us thinking about the NBA Finals, of course. But for those of us who live along the East Coast, today is the start of the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season. Forecasters are expecting as many as 17 named storms this year alone. Nine will likely become hurricanes and four could be major storms category three or higher. The season got a jump start back in April with Tropical Storm Arlene. And come look at what cameras caught south of the border. This giant rare red tornado that's known as a snake ripped through a small town in Mexico. The winds were so strong. Witnesses thought the world was coming to an end. The tornado picked up dirt and debris reportedly destroyed, destroyed several homes too. Thankfully, no one was hurt. I've never heard of a snake like that, uh, JD. No, I think it's because you see the rope tornado formation there that goes from one cloud, stretches across the sky, watch it there to another. So it's kind of snaking through, but it's a glorified rope tornado. And then you get the red feature in there because the, the dirt in that part of the country, that part of the earth is more that clay red dirt. So you start sucking that up into that funnel and that's why you get the red color there. So truly incredible video. Neat to see that to say the least and uh, glad to hear it wasn't terribly strong, not destroying a whole lot of things at all. Give you a live look outside uh, here this morning closer to home. Look at that red color in the sky this morning as the sun continues to rise. Officially won't be above the horizon for another about half hour or so, but still beautiful for picture taking this morning. No clouds to be found really maybe a few high thin clouds here and there. Otherwise that is about it. We have no rain to dodge this morning or anything else like that. So certainly it's a five star stellar sunglasses day to say the least. Temperature check right now. We're 47 Sagamore Hills, 51 in Solon, 50 Shaker Heights, 53 for those watching in Parma this morning, 53 in Strongsville, 54 in Westlake. Good morning to all of you. Thanks as always for starting off your morning with us here on News 5. 50 in Ashtabula, 49 in Youngstown, 53 for Akron, 50 in Mansfield. The typical overnight low this time of year, by the way, is 55. So we're actually a little bit cooler in some areas. Plenty of sunshine today. A few clouds may traipse by from time to time. Those temperatures should be in the low to middle 70s. I do think we briefly jump up and touch about 74, 75 this afternoon. Several things happening today. First off at 1210, it's the final game between the Indians and the A's today. Great afternoon to be at the ballpark. Temperatures should be in the low 70s. Not a whole lot in the way of wind may try to blow in a little bit toward about uh, the first base area. Then tonight, this is the big thing for those heading out for that watch party. The game, of course, is a late game because they're in California, so it's a nine o'clock tip off for us. Should be a little bit on the mild, if not cool side around seven to eight. Otherwise, a great night to cheer on our Cavaliers dry tonight dry tomorrow, even Saturday looking dry. However, by Sunday and Monday, we have some decent chances for rain to come into the mix. Also, we'll keep things on the warmer side as well, with our temperatures primarily staying in the upper 70s. Coming up, we'll take a look at what to expect in more detail over the weekend in the seven day forecast and a look at where May now ranks in terms of rainfall. We made a top 10 list. I'll show you more on that here in just a bit. Thanks, JD. Well, trending this morning, mascot mayhem at the Mets game. Yeah, everyone's talking about this. Mr. Matt lost his cool on some fans. Look what he did. No, at least we blurred it out. We're going to call this an obscene gesture there. Did it towards a group of fans at City Field during the team's loss last night. And you can see him walking down a tunnel when he turns around and gives the middle finger to the fans. And the team says the employee will not work in the costume again. They also apologize for the actions of that employee. He also has three fingers. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're planning a trip to Vegas anytime soon, listen up. The free drinks you're accustomed to may be going away. A company that's making sure you're spending enough money gaming before you get your free drinks is now testing a system that will do the same thing for slots throughout the casino. It was just last year that Caesars Entertainment rolled out an automated system tracking video poker players rate of play before rewarding them with a traditional free drink. According to the company, the system has saved 1 million in comp drinks at the single location where it's being used. Well, up next, a bomb scare in the air. A man tries to storm the cockpit of an airplane. How passengers were able to restrain him. New information overnight about Uber, the huge loss the company took for the second quarter in a row. And let's get a quick check of that commute. Here's John Rudder. Terrence looking pretty good so far for that morning commute. Just be aware of that closure on 77 southbound. Remember between 90 and 490. That's in place until 6 a.m. They're doing some striping on the roads. We're back after the break. Love it. 
Good morning to you 523 on this Thursday live look outside. Here we go. The dawn of what's going to be a great game one, even though it's not in Cleveland. We're still going to win this, but that of course is a fact we already know. Here's some more facts for you. We made the top 10 list for wettest Mays on record in Cleveland. We just barely sneak in at number nine. We finished the month with just over six inches of rainfall. The most rain ever in the month of May was back in 1989. We had just a shade over nine inches of rainfall. Looking back here over the last few years, this was a soaker of a May compared to 2016, 2015, 2014 and 2013. Now we need a few days to dry things out for sure. Matter of fact, just to give you more details on this, three and about a quarter inches fell in the last week of the month of May. The average of the entire month, 3.66. See, I'm a weather number nerd kind of guy. So let me hit you with the seven day to help you plan things out. It should be dry today, tomorrow, and Saturday. We could use that. Problem is that grass is going to grow. You got to get out there and cut the grass. Then by Sunday and Monday, rain and some thunder trying to work their way back in and cooler air coming in for next week with temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s. Weather number nerd. I'm glad you said it because I was thinking it. All right, we got to get to some new video for you this morning. The man who police say threatened to set off a bomb during a Malaysian Airlines flight, then tried bus Busting into the cockpit. So this is a pretty serious charges right now. New video shows armed agents hauling the guy off the flight after it landed. He started yelling about having a bomb and approached the cockpit just 10 minutes into the flight from Melbourne, Australia to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Listen to what the pilot told air traffic controllers as he made that U-turn. Aiming to have an explosive device trying to enter the cockpit has been uh, overpowered by passengers. However, we try to land and have the device checked out. Now, a few passengers tackled that guy, tied him down using belts, too. The flight went back to Melbourne, and investigators found no bomb. The man was released from a mental hospital just hours before the flight. He's expected to be in court today. Take a look at these new images this morning of damage caused by a fire on board a JetBlue flight. Flames breaking out in a passenger's backpack. A lithium battery is to blame here. Flight attendants grabbed the backpack, put it in a bathroom, has apparently stopped the battery from overheating. The cross-country flight had to divert to Michigan. Thank goodness no one was hurt. And new overnight, despite another big financial loss, things are looking to, looking to be improving for Uber. The Transportation Service says it lost more than $700 million in the first three months of this year. That's better than the previous quarter with the ride hauling giant saw losses of over $990 million. The company reported its first quarter revenue rose roughly 18% to $3.4 billion. The news comes as Uber's head of finance announced that he's leaving the company. Well, up next, no boarding passes needed. The airline that could soon allow people to use fingerprints in place of paperwork. Hmm. And a new way to communicate with Siri, Apple's future product that could be revealed any day now. And as we had to break, here's a look at last night's winning lottery numbers. Get that paper player, get that money, honey. Good luck. We'll be right back. News 5's Good Morning Cleveland starts now. It's time to defend the land. Oh, they got me all hype. Here we go, Cleveland. Time for game one. The Cavs are being called the underdog again. Time to be all in and prove them wrong. And then thieves targeting the suburbs, going out in groups, stealing several cars at once. And we found even your garage may not be safe. And taking on the drug companies, it's the new fight in the opioid crisis. And the state wants to make them pay. And we are waking up to another beautiful sunrise this game one day. Let's go to Power 5 meteorologist J.D. Rudd. J.D., I know you're hyped. What are we, 15 and a half hours away? This is fantastic. I'm going to stay up all day for this. I'm going to stay up all night. I'm going to take tomorrow off so I can watch this game. I I'm being serious about that. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I'll have the Cavs hangover, if you will. Let's hope they win. All right, temperatures right now. I know they will 47 in Minter, 54 in Cleveland, 52 Elyria, 53 in Canton. It's a little bit on the cool side for some this morning, so maybe you need a jacket. But later on today, throw that sucker in the back seat. You will not need it. Lots of sunshine. It'll be warm if you're in a vehicle today, if that's what your job entails. If you have to work outside, great day to be outside. A lot of sunshine, less wind today versus yesterday. A little more out of the north, so perhaps a cooler wind at times. Temperatures should be in the low to 
mid 70s. A little warmer air coming in for tomorrow. We'll talk how warm here in just a little while. John. We're looking accident free right now, but a couple of things I want to mention for folks heading out the door. A ramp closure on Route 30 westbound to 77 southbound. That begins today. It's going to be in place until June 30th, though. Big picture, I'm not seeing many problems, but this one's going to linger along until about 6 o'clock. 77 southbound between 90 and 490. They're doing some striping in that area on the roads. Uh, beware of that closure until 6 a.m. Terrence. All right, John, it is game day. The Cavs counting down to game one of the NBA Finals. It's going down in Oakland tonight. And we are ready for the excitement right here in Cleveland. News 5's Nick Foley is live outside the queue this morning. And Nick, it's all decked out and ready to go for the watch party. It is, guys. Game one and two, as we all know, away from Cleveland here in Oakland. But that does not mean that the Cavs fans can't rally together here at the queue where it's been the home base for these away games. It has been for the last two NBA Finals. It will be tonight as well. Game one, of course, tonight. The watch party begins uh, with gates opening at 7.30, the game just after 9 o'clock. Those tickets are $10 each, and they're still available at last check online as well. Now, the game one tonight coming on the heels of the focus turning from the championship to racism. Los Angeles police investigating vandalism at LeBron's house in Brentwood, where someone spray painted the N-word on the main gate of LeBron's home. The slur was painted over immediately, but police now looking at surveillance video and investigating it as a possible hate crime. LeBron saying he hopes the vandalism continues the conversation about racism in our country. And if it takes for someone to spray paint my gate and use that derogatory term, that hate on, um, on my family to shed a light on what the real issue is in the world, then so be it. Now, LeBron went on to add that he thinks that African-Americans in the country still has a long way to go before African-Americans feel equal, equal in the U.S. Uh, again, though, just not the type of focus we wanted before LeBron and the Cavs went into game one with the Warriors tonight in Oakland. Reporting from outside the queue, Nick Foley for News 5. Back to you. Tough conversation indeed, but one that needs to be had, Nick. Thank you. The Cavs already looking ahead to next season too, at least when it comes to what they'll be rocking on the court. That's right. The team is showing off these new logos for the 2017 2018 season. They incorporate the letter C and with the sword and shield. Also, Nike will replace Adidas as the official uniform provider. Cavs fans can get a preview at the team shop today and the new team uniforms will be unveiled later this summer. And News 5 is your home for the NBA Finals. Our coverage starts at 7 tonight with our pregame show. Tip off is at 9. Then we will have your complete postgame coverage. We'll be covering that win for you. We'll have news and weather too right after the game. We have to get to a news alert this morning. Police saying crooks are casing the suburbs. They're going out in groups and stealing several cars from neighborhoods. News 5's Sarah Finney is following the case, and Sarah, many of these stolen cars are being found in the same area. Mostly spotted on the city's east side, and you really got to feel for the victims, but the advice from police, very simple. Just lock up your car and do not leave a spare set of keys inside. Unfortunately, it's a lesson Larry Saycatch says he learned the hard way. His brand new 2016 Ford Escape stolen right from his Twinsburg driveway. His keys, yep, they were inside. Five other cars also hit on his street. Twinsburg police say here's how they do it. The group drives into a neighborhood in the early morning hours. They get out and start looking for unlocked cars with those keys left inside, and then they just take off. Police have arrested a few suspects, some in their early teens, but investigators think there are more out there. Some way, somehow, these people have got to be held accountable. If they're 14 years old, 17 years old, then make their parents accountable. It gets dangerous. It gets dangerous because sooner or later, people are going to want to protect what's theirs. And say catch's car was found a few days after it was taken on Cleveland's east side. Twinsburg police are working with investigators in Solon, CMHA in Cleveland and other departments to crack the cases and Terrence unlock cars. Not the only easy target thieves are looking for these days. Yeah, there's something else for people to worry about at home. Sarah, thieves are targeting garages, so they are easier to break into than you might think. A quick search on YouTube reveals video after video showing it only takes seconds for someone to get into your garage using a coat hanger, a piece of metal, too. They pull in the door release that you usually use when the power goes out. Some people use zip ties to secure the release, but that doesn't always work. Many garage door companies offer other options, including a metal box that fits over the mechanism. 
So we can take it, put it on there, and basically nullify the ability to be able to just stick a wire in and open up your garage door. Hey, one more piece of advice here too. If you use a garage door code, make sure you clean it or change the code often because thieves can use, can guess your code, I should say, by looking at the worn down numbers. Mona? Well, imagine reading this in a letter. I've installed several explosives in the building, and if you do not send $25,000, I will blow up this whole block. Those words are being faxed to businesses across Northeast Ohio. A medical office in Fairview Park got one. This entire building had to evacuate because of it. Police and bomb sniffing dogs didn't find anything, but police say everyone has to take these threats seriously. Make sure that, that you're safe. Don't just blow it off because the one time you know it could be something that's legit. And that same letter was faxed to a business in Menor. Police didn't find anything there either. But the FBI tells us that they are investigating similar letters being sent out across the country. 536 breaking news from overnight. An explosion rocking a factory in Wisconsin. Several people taken to the hospital here. We'll have new information just coming in to the lot desk. And parachutes for packages. Amazon gets creative once again to deliver boxes to your door. But first, today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple may be ready to enter the smart speaker battle. There are reports this morning Apple may announce its Siri-powered smart speaker at its developers conference next Monday. Such a device would rival the Google Home and Amazon Echo. Apple, however, not commenting. Delta Airlines, meanwhile, is testing an alternative for boarding passes. Your fingerprint. The use of fingerprints is being tested at Ronald Reagan Airport in Washington, D.C. Right now, it's letting passengers into the Sky Club lounge, but one day could be used to allow passengers to quickly check bags and even board flights. And you are looking at the world's largest plane built by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen. It's called the Strato Launch. It has a 385-foot wingspan and weighs 500,000 pounds without fuel. It'll carry rockets into space and then launch them into orbit. Howard Hughes would be proud. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a good one. Tech Bites. Brought to you by Neutrogena. Can you actually love wearing powerful sunscreen? Yes. Neutrogena Ultra Sheer. No other sunscreen works better or feels so good. Clinically proven Helioplex provides unbeatable UVA UVB protection to help prevent early skin aging and skin cancer. All with a clean, light feel. For unbeatable protection, it's the one. The best for your skin. Ultra Sheer. Neutrogena. See what's possible. Tyler loves chicken. Turns out his old dog food had chicken byproduct meal. Not chicken. So I switched to Blue Buffalo. Blue is made with the finest natural ingredients and no chicken byproduct meal. We love him like family, so we feed him like family with Blue. Add sizzle to your savings at Macy's Summer Sale. Take an extra 20% off with your Macy's card or savings pass. Plus use your Macy's money now on top of coupons and sale prices on our best brands, even active and beauty. Now at Macy's. Good morning to you, 540 on this Thursday. I'm Power of 5 meteorologist J.D. Rudford for a lot of sunshine today. So if you happen to be one of those that has to work outside, postal carrier, lawn worker, sanitation worker, whatever it is, here's your outdoor worker forecast. Thumbs up this morning and thumbs up this afternoon. Just make sure you cover that exposed skin. Be aware of sunburns this time of year. Here's the hour by hour breakdown for today. Again, wall to wall sunshine. Temperatures pretty comfortable in the upper 60s to low 70s as we head toward the lunch hour. Let's go to the live desk now and check in with Sarah. Finn. Hey, J.D., we have some breaking news coming into the live desk. Unfortunately, a pretty familiar sight an attempted smash and grab this time in University Heights. Our photographer on scene snapping a couple pictures. This is at the corner of Green and Cedar. Someone tried to use the minivan to smash in and take an ATM. The ATM is still there, but quite a bit of damage here. We're making calls to find out more information. Terrence. All right, keep us posted. We already know Payless was looking to close about 400 stores here in the U.S. That number is now doubling. A second round of closings bringing the total to about 800. The, these are several stores in the Northeast Ohio area closing as well, including locations in Cleveland, Akron, and Menor. Well, Amazon has been getting creative lately when it comes to shipping. Yeah, it has patents for a whole drone delivery systems. Now it is adding to it. Check out the package parachute. It's built into the shipping label. And it's meant to get the package to your door without damaging it. Drone deliveries aren't happening here quite yet, but Amazon has used them in Britain. 
And up next, we are talking calves, this time with Governor Kasich. We go one-on-one -on -one with John Kasich about what he has to say about the calves' chances. Nearly a year after the Orlando terror attack, we're getting a look at what it was like when police arrived and the noise they say they will never forget. Plus, Super Screen 5 is up and running, keeping an eye on your weather and traffic during the break. We'll be right back. 545 now breaking overnight from the live desk. An explosion and fire at a corn milling plant in Wisconsin injures multiple people. The plant has several levels and part of it collapsed. It's an around the clock plant, so some employees were there when this explosion happened. At this point, we don't know how many people were hurt, but more than three helicopters were sent in to pick up victims. The mill produces corn and ethanol. It's located about 30 miles away from Madison, and I'm seeing on Twitter, Terrence, that officials are going to be providing an update soon. Okay, Sarah. It's been almost a year since a gunman walked into Pulse nightclub in Orlando and started shooting. Police are now releasing hours of new body cam footage showing what officers saw when they got there. They rushed into that club. It was dark through a broken window. The darkness making it hard to figure out who was who. The whole time they were still hearing shots being fired. The other sound they were hearing, dozens of phones ringing. And I mean multiple phones, just laying in pools of blood. Knowing that it's somebody's loved one trying to get a hold of their loved one. The shooter, Omar Mateen, barricaded himself in a bathroom with hostages. He called 911 saying he had bombs. Officers eventually made their way in, getting into a shootout with Mateen and killing him. In the end, 49 people were killed, making it the deadliest terror attack on U.S. soil since 9-11. Now to a disturbing story coming out of Chicago. A 16-year-old girl accused of stabbing her Uber driver with, to death with a machete. Prosecutors say Eliza Wozni was picked up by Grant Nelson. She had just stolen a machete and a knife from Walmart. Police say she attacked him from the back seat. He jumped out of the car and tried to get help. The victim runs to the lobby door and is heard banging and screaming, help me, help me, I'm going to die. And he did die a few hours later. Wozni is being charged now as an adult with murder. It's still not clear why she attacked him. A noose uh, was found inside the Tisnodian's National Museum of African American History and Culture. It was found in an exhibit on segregation. Visitors were in the building. When it was found, they had to be escorted out while police investigated. This is actually the second noose found this week. One was found hanging on a tree outside the Smithsonian's Contemporary Art Museum last Friday. And today,